What's up, The Rock? My name is Abor Bristando, your youth pastor here at Columbia River Foursquare Church. Thank you for watching this video. Um, right now, we have a special guest. Her name is Sarah Rivera from Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she is, she's the youth director at um, Praise Chapel Christian Fellowship. That's the church that I grew up at. Yeah. So, Sarah, thank you for being here. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. Just a while ago, <laughs> we were talking and just chatting and catching up. But can you tell the audience um, who, uh, I guess, who you are? Um, what do you do at Praise Chapel Christian Fellowship? What do you do outside of Praise Chapel Christian Fellowship? Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Sarah. Um, like Abel said, I'm from Hawaii. Uh, we basically grew up together. Our families are like super, super close. My mom babysat Abel when he was yeah. a little boy. Sure. So many funny stories with that. Oh, um, right now. <laughs> no, I, I won't. Right now. Um, I am the youth director um, at my church. Just recently, I became the youth director. So it's super exciting. We have a small youth group, about 12 of us, but it's super fun, like a very close family type of group. That's awesome. Um, I'm still in college. I just got my associates this Whoa! past week. And I'm getting my bachelor's. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting my bachelor's um, next year what in Bible and pastoral. What, what'd you get in your, what's your associates? And what's my associates your bachelor's going to be? My associates is in Christian ministry and my bachelor's mm -hmm. is in Bible and pastoral ministry. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. to be done. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <I'm> ready. <laughs> so what do you do as a youth director or a youth director? Mm hmm yeah, what do you do? Yeah. So uh, since we just transitioned um, to like combining churches, we're still kind of figuring out that. And it's really hard with COVID, obviously. Um, yeah, but know. right now we've just been like planning and kind of just creating a team. So I'm still at like the beginning stages yeah. um, since we'd like transitioned and stuff. So finding people. Um, lately, we've just been doing Zoom calls with our youth since we can't like see each other yeah. in the physical we're but doing that too. That's kind of where we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, you're you're doing all of this. This is um, really cool and exciting that you're getting to um, learn about ministry and actually do ministry. Yeah. That's super exciting. Students, right there. This is cool. But <laughs> um, so we have been learning about prayer and my sermon series is called standing in the gap. And we just been learning mm -hmm. so much about prayer and I've been trying to get people in to talk about their prayer life and what's going on in their world of prayer. And so can you tell me your journey uh, in prayer? Yeah. So I guess like I grew up in the church, so Jesus was like always there. Um, I didn't really, I guess, develop a prayer lifestyle or understood the importance of it. So I would say like I was out of high school. Wow. Then it kind of became more like, oh, this is like a serious thing. And then I actually started to like enjoy it. Like, I guess obviously being a teen, you know, there are other things you'd rather do than to like sit and pray, especially when your mind is like racing. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I learned the importance of that, I guess, uh, once I got out of high school and I started to like um, find myself really just sitting before the Lord mm. um, and making space and time for that versus just like, I'm going to pray before I go to sleep, mm. you know? And I started to understand that, um, reading my Bible was great, but there was also an importance to just converse with God, just to talk to him. Wow. And also like, um, kind of going into like that other question, like who inspired you to pray? I guess watching my mom and seeing her like take the time out of her day to be like, I'm going to go into um, my prayer closet, like yeah. in that movie war room, you know, yeah. she'd be like, don't bother me for the next hour. I'm going <laughs> to sit in my room and I'm going to pray. And seeing her faithfulness in that it like, mm -hmm inspired me to um actually put that into practice in my own life wow that's that's crazy i love the fact that um you said that from high school you just kind of shifted gears and started to learn how important prayer is can you tell us a little bit more about that like why is prayer so important to you uh it's it's important because i guess like 
I put it into comparison with like reading your word because as Christians, we know that that's also an important thing uh, in growing as a Christian and in our faith. Yeah. Um, but I guess like I realized the difference was like that gave me an opportunity to talk to God and wow. like it came from my own heart. Yeah. And like uh, just with transitioning like from high school into becoming a college student, like life is crazy and I realized like wow I really need God like in some really tough situations and different things were going on like in my life during that time and it I guess I understood the importance when I realized that like I needed more of God Mm. so it like gave me that push to like cry out to him yeah more and like obviously seeing him um answer prayers and to like move in my life was like sounds dumb but like prayer works you know and it's like okay I need to do this you know what I mean no I do I do and that's why I I okay let's just say I was praying and asking God like Lord who do you want me to highlight like who do you want me to bring to Mm -hmm. to these students to share about life and for some reason Sarah this is why (laughs) your name kept popping up your name kept popping up and so I love the fact that you said that, you know, you just started to learn, you know, I need to spend more time with God and the way you mm-hmm. spend more time. Cause then a lot of people think, Oh, I need to spend more time with God. I'm going to grab my Bible. And that's yeah. not a bad thing. That's yeah, not yeah, a bad thing. Yeah. But we always forget, Oh, we can also pray. <laughs> yeah. Commune with God by prayer. And I love the fact that you focused on, Oh, I need to pray. This is yeah. awesome. So, I think too, like you learn like a different um, side of who God is. You learn more about his character when you pray versus just reading too. Yeah, no, it's, it's real. And I love the fact that the way you talked about how you pray, it sounds like you have a relationship like that's like God is your father, like your father, yeah. your your heavenly father, the way you described your prayer life. That's what I was sensing. Like, Oh, this is like, Hey, I'm a child of God. And I interact with God through prayer Mm -hmm. as a child. Oh man, really awesome. (laughs) And so you already kind of jumped into the next question I was going to ask is who inspired you? And Mm -hmm. you brought up your mother. I know your mom. I love your mom. She's so awesome. (laughs) And yes, she is part of my prayer story as well. I mean, and uh, your mom, I was going to just call her auntie. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> I know you can, I can, but my audience are probably like auntie. <laughs> but um, your mom also showed me like everyone from your, the church, like showed me how important prayer is. But okay. uh, yeah, so tell me a little bit more about your mom and the inspiration and how you drew from that. And when you were in high school and then you were trying to figure out, okay, how do I draw closer to God? A little bit more about that story. Sorry. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Or not, but. No, no, no. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like I said, just watching my mom, um, I guess, go into her prayer room and just pray. And I guess also knowing like the backstory behind that and a lot of the reasons why she would do it is because like there was something heavy on her heart that she like, mm-hmm. not that she was just going to God because she had a need, but mm-hmm. like she just knew how powerful and amazing God was which led her to being in that position of prayer and um growing up like we had enough like we had I would say we have more than enough but I know that there were times when like it was scary for my parents like living in Hawaii it's so expensive and you're literally paycheck to paycheck I know you remember that and that was one of the the cries I believe on my mom's heart and not only that but just people in her past Um, So just watching her hunger and thirst, like for a move of God, because she knew who he was and how good he was. um, It like triggered that in me to be like, okay, you know, I need to do that. And as well as like her um, just being there when I needed prayer. Yeah. It also like showed the importance of it for me. How, how, um, how was it? How was life like with a praying parents? It is super awesome. Um, Sometimes I like, I feel bad when like I bring that up because I know not everybody, you know, gets to experience that. But like, I'm super grateful 
to have that. And I know that that's part of the reason why, like, I am where I am today. Because yeah. my life could have taken me anywhere, despite being, you know, a pastor's kid. Yeah. I could literally be anywhere that I want right now. <laughs> but it's because of their prayers that I am where I am. Yeah. So it's important. Well, I was just thinking about that. Like, why I brought that question up is just because of the fact that, like, you know, it's a blessing when our parents are praying parents. But mm-hmm. like you said, not everyone has praying parents. Yeah. Yeah. But like everyone, there's always a point in a family or um, a parent that comes to the realization that I am going to pray. Someone mm-hmm. starts it, right? Like someone yeah. in their life or, for example, my family's life, I found out that my mom and dad, they're the, they're the beginning of my family as Christians. They yeah. were the start. They were the ones that was like, I'm going to, I decide now I'm going to follow mm-hmm. Jesus and I'm going to pray. And so I just wanted to give that impact or that vision students, if you're listening, that, you can be that impact for your future family, your future yeah. kids, your future wife, your future husband, your future whatever. You could start that prayer blessing, just like how so many of Sarah's um, was that family and friends from Hawaii started praying right at that moment or right there was able mm-hmm. to bring blessing into Sarah's life because they started yeah. and they chose, I'm going to pray. Man, that's mm-hmm. super awesome. I'm feeling the Holy Spirit right now, just going, <laughs> so many avenues of how much and how important prayer is for a believer. However, we got to keep going. What <laughs> prayer practice would you um, advise my students to practice if they want to grow deeper in relationship with our Lord and Savior? What kind of practice would you give them or advice? Well, there's a lot that I can think of. Um, <laughs> uh, so for me, I'm, I don't know if it's a female thing. It could totally be. But my brain is scattered all over the place, especially being a full-time student, working, being in ministry. So something I really like to do is writing my prayers down. Whew. Sorry. That's what I, I like to do. something about that. <laughs> <laughs> so writing your prayers down, I think, helps you stay focused as well as, like, you can look back. Mm -hmm. um on them and like sometimes i well not sometimes but i know like not a lot of students like to actually take out a piece of paper and write we live in a digital age so put it in your notes type it out and sometimes you might do that really fast yeah that's what (laughs) i'm i love paper when it comes to journaling that's my thing i I don't do technology (laughs) but i think that that definitely helps you um stay focused i know some people put on their walls, like things they want to pray for. So they remember, um, that's also a good thing to do Yeah, too. If you want to, uh, yeah, go deeper. That's a great, um, great, great physical thing. I mean, when I started to learn to write down, date it out, be as specific as possible Mm -hmm. and see God actually answer that. And then see the, the distance in between the prayers or how fast or how long it just yeah. builds up faith when you're like, Holy snap from what was that? 20, 2002, God answered this or yeah. 2012, God answered that. It's just super amazing and super yeah. cool. This is great. Cause it transitions us to this one question of what is one of the wildest answered um, prayer you have ever heard or experienced or even asked God to do? What is, what is um, your wildest answered prayer? So I think I have like, I have one that I'll share, but I think just in general, um, any answered prayer for me has been like awesome because I'm the type of person who likes to put things into my own hands. Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm like going through that uh, process of like having to surrender and then be like, okay, Jesus, like I need you in this moment, like move in this situation. Um, It always like brings me back to like a place of awe. And I'm like, okay, God, like you're so good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Sounds terrible, but (laughs) youth directors go through it too, guys. Um, (laughs) So any prayer answer to me is just wild. Uh, One in particular that um, I can think of was I have a friend who uh, I guess was going through like different things one time and it was a major major struggle for him and 
like me being, you know, a good friend, I'm like, okay, you know, I want to help out in any way that I can. Um, and I remember like just praying throughout this season that my friend was going through and a couple months went by and I was like, okay, Lord, like I want to help. And through that time, like I said, I was praying and asking God to move on his behalf. And I remember one day I was like, okay, I want to help. How do I help? And God told me in specific, like, if you keep helping like your friend, you will never let me, you'll never see me move in his life. And that's what I've been praying for prior was God like moving his life. But like I said earlier, I'm the type of person to take things into my own hands yeah. and like um, do things on my own. Uh, and so once God said that, I was like, whoa, okay, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to keep praying. And since that like moment after that, I saw God just move like crazy in my friend's life, like financially, like one day he would tell me like, okay, you know, I don't like have anything right now. And then like a couple of days later, like a paycheck would come in and then like his job started like um, moving more in his life, um, mm -hmm. getting just more jobs and all of that. And so prayer is like super powerful. And this uh, just happened within the last like two years. And so mm -hmm. God has been like moving crazy, even through this like COVID-19 in my friend's life. Um, he's been, God has been moving mightily. Oh, and so um, for me, like seeing that faithfulness, it just yeah. made me even more so like trust God. Like it has nothing to do with my life, but yeah. watching God move in his life is starting to affect my life and to trust God even more so in the things that I'm going through. So mm -hmm. prayer is powerful. <laughs> that is, that's, that's amazing. And yeah, that's, that's great. Cause then you, you care for this person. You love this yeah. person and to hear God say back off. That must have yeah. been hard. I was like, okay. <laughs> Uh, I was like, all right, God, thing. okay, even after that whole, um, God, like, spoke to me, there were moments where I was like, okay, maybe I can help this time, because things were, like, up and down, and then God would, like, instantly remind me of what he said, and I was like, okay, mm. I trust you, and then I would go into, like, a place of just, like, okay, God, I pray that you just move right now in his life, whatever he needs, if it's peace, if it's finances, anything like that, just move, and then, like, a couple days later, He'll like call me, be like, "Hey, guess what happened?" I'm like, "Wow, Jesus, wow. you're real." Like, <laughs> that's crazy, and that's that can be so tough with right, even right now with COVID nineteen. Yeah, and, you know, we hear probably we get phone calls from friends and maybe from family members or um, friends from school, and sometimes we feel powerless. But yeah. learning that by praying and and we can just listen to our friends. And then mm -hmm. pray after God hears our prayers and he's interacting and fighting. Yeah. On behalf. I mean, one of the scriptures that I've been trying to memorize is Exodus 14, 14, which says, um, the Lord himself fights for you. Just stay calm. And I've been yeah. reminding myself that over and over as this COVID-19 is happening. Um, but is there any Bible verses or um, yeah, Bible verses about prayer or just in anything that um, you would like my students to hear about or know about? Yeah, so um, like I was saying earlier, my mom is such a, an important person in my prayer life. And um, mm. growing up, something I like struggled with, which was really weird, I don't know why, but I had like a really hard time sleeping and I would be so afraid. And it sounds like funny thinking about it, um, but that was like what happened. And yeah. my mom gave me this, uh, it was a chapter. It's in Psalms 91, the entire chapter. And it's basically talking about resting in under the Lord's wings and how you can find safety and peace and comfort uh, being in that place. Uh -huh. um, and basically it's just talking about uh, just resting in your father's arms, you know, in a easier way to understand. And so my mom gave me that to remember, remember so that I could um, just feel easier or to feel peace as I was falling asleep. And it, it did help. And now looking back on that verse, that's something that I use and I pray over myself. Wow. I pray over my room. And I found out this past um, semester that it's, it's a scripture that's used for like um, spiritual warfare for battles you know? And so if you are feeling like scared or you're worried or you're um, uncertain of the future 
or maybe you feel anxious. Um, that's something I deal with. And yeah. using this scripture and just saying it out loud um, does change it. Like when you say it out loud, you can hear it. It's out there in the open. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's just powerful. It's a very powerful chapter. It may be hard to memorize, but if you know Psalms 91, whenever you're in that place, I want to like encourage you students, open up your Bible. Like your phone is with you 24 seven. So there's no excuses. <laughs> open it up and just say it out loud. Middle of the night, yeah. right in the morning, middle of the day, you know, yeah, speak it. Man, I, there's been countless times when anxiety hits me or mm -hmm. fear or confusion or um, you, you name it. Um, it could be even depression to yeah. and fighting of anger. And I learned so how important it is to pray scripture, to pray scripture. And um, Romans 8.28 was my thing. That's really mm. cool to hear. Um, Psalms 91 was yours, Sarah, whenever you're feeling that anxiousness. And it's so true. When we go to God and if we're praying scripture or praying to him, that peace that passes all understanding and that yeah. peace that when we say, Lord, you know, come into this room and we speak scripture into existence, yeah. how that, that, that peace of just that relaxation or that, that calm mm. after all that happens. It's, it's crazy when that happens right in the moment and we, we re are reminded of those verses and we, we speak it out and then yeah, all of a sudden so it's like power. a storm is happening and then just calm. Mm -hmm. Man, that is amazing. Again, students, this is Sarah Rivera from <laughs> Praise Chapel Christian Fellowship. Um, Sarah, before we pray, is there anything, I know um, we just asked the, the verse, but uh, is there anything that you would like to share with maybe girls, high school girls um, right now? Like, is there anything that you could I don't know, share or spontaneously give. I know this is off yeah. script. He doesn't know about <laughs> this. But yeah, what if, what if, if you could share something to my high school girls and my middle school girls or just the girls in general for any girls, yeah, yeah. Lessons, what, what would it be? <laughs> um, I guess I, I would say just don't be afraid to run to the father mm. whenever you are going through something. And this kind of applies to even boys. Um, I mean, girls are more, I would say more criers, um, but know that God, sometimes words, um, I would say don't mean as much as tears. So it's okay to cry in front of God. And um, it's okay to just talk to him like a friend, like a dad. And you don't always have to come with a dear heavenly father. You can just come with like Papa, Abba, dad, like I'm hurting. And you don't always have to come to him with a clean heart. You just come to him as you are. Wow. And he will truly see that. Um, so just don't be afraid to run to him whenever you're dealing with a, a heartbreaking situation. That's powerful. And just to not be sexist, do you have anything to say <laughs> for the guys? Uh, like, same thing too. Or young guys coming in? Uh, same thing too. Just, um, run to God, no matter what is going on. And even if you cry, God still thinks you're manly <laughs> or whatever. Um, but he'll, your statement, guys. he will see it. <laughs> he will see it and he'll honor that. It's the humility that he sees, you know, humble heart. <laughs> yep. Guys, the faster you learn to cry, the easier you learn to come to your father and he hears mm -hmm. it and he feels it. But yep. That's Sarah Rivera. Thank you guys and girls for watching this video um, of The Rock. I hope you guys can be able to come back next time and see some more awesome new people. But thank you. God bless you guys. See you again. Bye. Thank you for watching this video of The Rock. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube where you can like, love, and subscribe to all new rock content. Please make sure that you have all your um, that you are up to date in all your information where you can look at that on our cr4square.com and update any of our information. Why? Why? Because we have some Pokemon cards to give out for prizes this time. Bam!
So if you are the first one to comment, not only just comment though, but comment your Bible verse, your prayer verse, whatever it is. You found out from me, my prayer verse was Romans 8, 28. You heard from Sarah, her prayer verse was Psalms 91. So if you comment, be the first person to comment and comment your Bible verse, and with your name at the end, you will win one of these. The first prize winner will get a pack of um, Cosmic Eclipse and a tag team Pokemon card with a Metal GX. Second place, the second person that comments with their Bible verse at the end, with their name at the end, will get two prize packs. One from a Celestial Storm and then the other from Evolution. Sorry. And then third place will get the Sun and Moon um, Lost Thunder Pack. So, if you are wanting one of those prizes, be the first three to comment with their Bible verse in the comment and their name at the end so I know who to send it to. I noticed in my video that I said we're going to pray and I forgot to pray, so here it is. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for Sarah. We pray a blessing over her family, over her ministry, over her time with us. Father, we pray for all the students that have been watching this video, and we just pray for an anointing and a blessing over them, through them, around them, Lord God, as they um, wither through the storm of COVID-19, that they would be able to be a blessing to all their friends, all their family, and the community around them. So we pray a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. See you guys next week. And have a great day.